What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna be going through the most common beginner PVM mistakes. These are all things that I have seen in the PVM coaching videos that I do. I will link some of those down below if you guys haven't seen them yet. I've still been getting more of those lately. However, a lot of the stuff in them have been the same sort of things. And I don't wanna just keep repeating myself over and over again for you guys watching and thinking, hey, this is the same video, so we'll go from there. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the things that I tend to mention quite often and the same sort of things in each of those videos uh, and put them all into one place. And I can just link that to anyone who may need it. So I hope this video does help you out. If it does, then do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And other than that, let's go. Okay, so the first thing we are gonna actually talk about and is kind of really important and probably gonna take up most of the video in my opinion is going to be the preset or your inventory when you go to do bosses or any sort of PVM thing in, in general. The main thing that I would have mentioned almost every video is things that people would be taking with them in the inventory, on their worn equipment, all this sort of stuff as there is a, that's a huge difference in what you're gonna get, be getting out of bossing if you aren't taking the right stuff. Now I'm not talking about adding on 50 different switches. That is not the way I work anyway in game personally. I don't take all that many switches, but there are a few things that you want to take that are going to make your life easier and in a lot of situations make your kills a lot smoother and then in, in return a lot faster. Generally, faster kills tend to be smoother kills as well, so it all kind of pans out together. So in this section, I'm going to cover a few things that are often missed, and I'm going to talk about why you want to take them, and then you guys are going to go and you're going to make a preset with an example preset that I'm going to give you on screen, and then when you go to different bosses, you are going to add the, any extra things that you may want to go with to that boss, okay? So this is going to be important, and if you are wanting to improve, if you aren't using these items, don't think, eh, I can't bother getting that, and then worry that you aren't going to be able to get enough DPS, or you aren't doing like getting through things as easily this is important this is huge that's why i spent a minute on the intro to this section okay so there's a few items like i said that people just don't seem to take to bossing and these make such a massive difference to just immediately like as soon as you take them as soon as you start using them that you notice massive difference the first one is going to be an adrenaline potion i'm not going to involve things like your overloads your prayer renewals all that sort of stuff because i assume most of you guys are going to be using overloads and all that sort of good stuff right an adrenaline potion has been missed on most of the coaching videos that I've done. You want to be taking an adrenaline potion because it is going to increase your adrenaline. Meaning when you use things like a death swiftness or a sunshine or a berserk, you can then use an adrenaline potion straight after and push yourself to using thresholds immediately. The better the adrenaline potion, the better. As in, if you have adrenaline renewals unlocked, then use those. They are even better than the other ones. And you want to be taking advantage of these Every time you use a Sunshine, Death Swiftness, or Berserk, you will use an Adrenaline Potion, and you will add that to your rotation. Sunshine, Adrenaline Pot. Death Swiftness, Adrenaline Pot. Berserk, Adrenaline Pot. You would use these every time, because you're going to be able to jump straight to Thresholds and put out more damage. Thresholds do more damage than Basics, so the goal in a rotation of those is, as soon as you use the Ultimate, you want to get as many Thresholds as you can, off during that ultimate that is where your dps will come from in most situations so simply from just bringing a adrenaline potion with you you are going to end up increasing your damage a lot this is something that makes a huge difference to people and it's been proven through the actual coaching things people saving a few minutes off their times and stuff trust me bring one of these with you the next is going to be vulnerability bombs quite often i argue with people that these are worth it when people say they aren't Always bring vulnerability bombs. They are 30k each time you throw them around about that and they give you a 10% damage increase. Now, to put that into comparison, if you have the tier 95 prayers unlocked, the DPS prayers, and then you upgrade to the tier 99 ones, this is not a 10% increase in damage. However, it does cost you around about 800 million GP. So, when you look at this, the fact of getting that much damage increase just from paying 30k and throwing it, yes, it is only a temporary one minute boost, but is it absolutely worth it? And of course, they stack with the other upgrades as well. So always take these, always use these. They are 100% worth it. Unless you're killing a boss in like 30 seconds, in which case, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But otherwise, you want to be using these. The only place you wouldn't is at Araxor, as he does just remove the vulnerability effect. So don't worry about it there. Next up is the only switch that I'm going to put in here as a thing that you kind of have to bring and kind of have to use. And if you don't want to use it as a switch, you can put it on your main weapon. That is going to be a planted feet switch. It is also probably worth mentioning as well that you can now get the greater death swiftness, greater sunshine uh, as a codex as well. So you don't need to use planted feet. But what planted feet is going to do is extend the duration of your death swiftness or your sunshine, meaning that you can get more thresholds off, more damage off in that absolute amazing buff. So it's important that you do use the planted feet perk, whether you put it on your main weapon or not, whether you put it on your switch either way it is one of the best perks you can absolutely get and it is recommended that you bring one along if you don't bring one then bring it please get one if it's a switch then use it as a switch if it's not then just put it on your main weapon either way it's your best perk to get 
Next up is a shield. If you are going bossing, bring a shield with you. It doesn't matter where you're going, just bring a shield with you. In all situations, it is worth bringing it because if you want to just get a cheeky res out or something like that, or use any sort of defenses, which we will be talking about later on in the video as well, then it is absolutely worth bringing this along with you. But many situations, a shield will save your life. Please have a shield on your preset, no matter what. If you think you're not going to use it, just bring it. Because there's been plenty of situations I've thought, I don't need a shield at this boss. Don't need it. It's not used. And then one day, I'm like, oh, if I hadn't used Barricade then, I'd have died. So definitely bring one along. It's just a great habit to get into. Finally, bring along a weapon poison if the target that you're attacking is poisonable. It doesn't matter if you've got Cinder Banes. These stack together. Bring a weapon poison with you. It is free damage. Just drink one dose before the fight starts or even drink it at the bank before you leave through the portal. It lasts 12 minutes and you can use this and it'll increase your damage without you doing anything. Once you've drunk the dose, you don't need to do anything else. It is free damage. If the target is poisonable, then bring it. It is worth it. Okay, so that covers most of the stuff in the inventory that people do tend to forget and that I've mentioned a lot. And I've also explained why you should be doing that too. Now, I'm going to put on screen for you now a preset that I would recommend you guys make as a blanking preset. So you will use this whenever you're going to a new boss. For example, if you're going to do the Arc Glacier, you will load this preset and you will add in any extra things that you may think you'll need. So for example, this preset doesn't have weapon poison on it, but the Arc Glacier is poisonable. So you'll add a weapon poison dose to it and then you'll add your food afterwards and go from there. So if you want to, then pause the video here. You can copy this, make it as one random preset, and then you can load that and change it to other bosses when you need to. With that being said, let's move to the next bit. The next thing that I'm going to quickly mention is going to be revolution bars or your action bars, your ability bars, all that sort of good stuff. This is something that gets mentioned in most of the videos as revolution bars may not be set up correctly or in an optimal way or not really an optimal way, just, just a way that works well. Now, the best way to do this is I will link down in the description the link to the actual RuneScape wiki where it's going to tell you suggested action bars based on what you've unlocked and what you're doing in the game. If you're killing things with multiple targets, it'll tell you what to use. If you're killing bosses, single target bosses, all that sort of stuff, it will tell you what to use. You want to copy these and just place them into your action bar and make sure you're using the best one that you can find. It is also worth mentioning that things like Regret Concentrate a Blast and Needle Shot will increase crit chance or a flat damage increase for Needle Shot to the actual next ability. These will not apply to bleeds though. So it makes sense to not have your bleeds straight after the Great Concentrate Blast, for example, as you're just going to be wasting that extra crit chance or on Needle Shot, wasting that flat damage increase if you do use it on a bleed. These are worth keeping in mind. The wiki does take this into account and it does give you the best option. Uh, it's all been worth, worked out mathematically and stuff. So it's absolutely worth doing that if you are a revolution player. If you're playing full manual, then it's kind of doesn't really matter as long as you know which abilities to prioritize. But I would also probably suggest setting your bar up in a way that still makes sense if you are learning full manual and rotating through the abilities in a way that does make sense still while you are learning. Like I say, this is linked below. So head over there, check out which ability bars you want to be using. Double check that you've got all the stuff unlocked and just copy it from that. If you have any questions about this, send me a message on Discord or just comment down below and I'll try and get back to you as quick as possible. The next thing that I seem to mention in most of the videos is going to be talking about defensives, using your shield, actually sort of like making your food last longer and not having to use a yak for the most part and stuff like that. You'll increase your DPS if you can bring a familiar like a Ripper Demon and using defensives makes it easier to come off of your yak, which is full of food because you just kind of don't really need them in most situations. So while a yak is great to learn on, if you can bring a Ripper Demon, it's going to balance out and that's the next thing I'm going to talk about. But in this section, I want to talk about using defensives. Now, Devotion, debilitate, both absolutely great abilities that you want to be using in most situations anyway. If you're using protection prayers, then use devotion just randomly, if anything. If you're not going to use it to deal with a mechanic, then just use it randomly. Throw it out there every now and again while you are learning because it will reduce the amount of food you use because it just completely blocks all damage that you're going to be taking from that target. So... Make sure you take advantage of this. Keep in mind that you can use this in certain situations as well. For example, at Vindicta, the ranged hit, you can use Devotion to block from that and swap to protect from ranged prayer, meaning that you don't take anywhere near as much damage. You can also use things like Debilitate for the exact same reason. Just throw it out there. It still does a little bit of damage and it will reduce the damage that you are taking. Next, you should also start looking at things like Resonance. Resonance is one that you'll have to do a switch for. Put your shield on, use Resonance, and then go back to your weapon. And it's it sounds a little bit more difficult than it is for beginners but it's really not that hard as long as you keybind stuff properly keybind it in a row you can set this up nice and easy for example put your shield on number four 
put your resonance on number five and then put your weapon back on number six so you would press four five and then as soon as you do the heal you press six and you go back to the weapon and you're good to go again now setting your switches up like this is incredibly useful and being able to use resonance is going to reduce the amount of food you use as it does heal you a lot depending on what you are healing from resonance will heal you on the next amount of damage that you're going to be taking instead of damaging you for example if you use this at the arc glacier during the cannon in normal mode you will get a full heal from it every single time if you use it at hellwear when he does the big melee attack you will get a decent heal from it as well you can know through a lot of bosses just from learning how to use resonance so if anything i would recommend getting used to this one defensive ability with your shield and the other two devotion and debilitate just to use them now and then to reduce the food you use keep an eye on these three defensives they're important but also you should read through your defensives and understand what they do learning what your defensives do makes pvming and surviving in situations that you normally wouldn't very possible so read through them and if you feel like you can make use of it then hey use it and see what happens Next up is making the switch from a Yak to a Ripper Demon or anything else, another DPS milieu and Nihil if you need to in certain places. And just taking advantage of that, it's going to make a massive difference. For example, if you're learning next, you want to be on a Nihil anyway. Don't use a Yak. Using a Nihil is so much more important. It will make your life so much easier. You splash like an absolute crazy person in next. You miss almost every ability if you don't use a Nihil and the right aura. And it's just absolutely worth using this. Getting your accuracy up is going to make it easier. Now, the reason it's worth swapping from a Yak to a DPS familiar is if your DPS DPS isn't that high, a Ripper Demon with scrolls can actually carry you pretty hard on the DPS side. Now this isn't something you have to be embarrassed about, a Ripper Demon deals a lot of damage, there's a reason that all the top tier PVMers are still using them. Taking a Ripper Demon with scrolls is going to get you through kills faster, and if you get through kills faster, then you're taking less damage, which means you need less food. If you're doing Karapak in normal mode and it takes you three to four minutes because you have a ripper demon and then instead if you don't have a ripper demon you have a yak it takes you five to six minutes that's like twice as long that you're taking damage from care pack from so that's twice as much food you're probably going to need so if you can get through the mechanics quickly if you can get through the kill quickly because of the dps increase from your familiar then you're going to have a much easier time trust me it is worth trying these out and seeing if you can get away with it most boss guides on youtube or on the wiki will tell you which familiar to use which they recommend and in most situations you want to use a ripper demon if you are using anything except a staff of armadil if you have a staff of armadil then calgarian demon is fine uh, it's, it's better in fact so you want to be using that but otherwise a ripper demon with scrolls depending on which boss you are killing if it's worth it then use scrolls if not then don't bother but bring the ripper demon anyway you're going to see a huge difference in your kill times trust me take advantage of these familiars they are important the final thing that I'm going to talk about is going to be adrenaline use or adrenaline management, I suppose you could call it. Now, very often in these videos, people would be sitting on a 100% adrenaline and then just still using basics and rotating through that sort of thing. And that is a massive DPS loss. If you have adrenaline, you want to be using thresholds. You want to be using things to dump adrenaline because using adrenaline tends to translate to getting more damage unless you're throwing it out on all on defensives and stuff, of course. But if you are going to be dumping thresholds, going to be dumping things like Gothic staff specs or dark bows then you're going to be making the most out of your adrenaline in comparison to if you have capped then you don't want to just be wasting that and, and building up on more basics throw those thresholds out they hit harder than your basics and when people mention like a dps rotation it's kind of a, a better way to put it in my opinion is an ability prioritization and knowing which abilities do more damage and using those above other ones for example if you can use wild magic you want to use wild magic instead of using things like impact or like rack or something like that because wild magic does more damage and the same goes for if they're there and they're available to use and you're not using them for example if they're not on cooldown and they're just being sat there then that's lost dps too use it get it ready to be used again as soon as possible and then fire it off again as soon as it's ready this all comes with practice it sounds a lot easier than it is easier said than done but it is something you need to get into the habit of and it's definitely worth keeping in mind the same does go though for example if you learn a boss and you know that something is about to change with a phase where you want to use death swiftness then maybe save a little bit of adrenaline up get to 100 percent and then as soon as you phase and you're ready to use your sunshine you can drop it or your death swiftness whatever you can drop that do as much damage as you can make sure you use your adrenaline potion and then you can get more damage off so you just need to learn when to manage when to use your adrenaline when to save it um but overall try not to sit 100 percent just using basics and attack, attacking the boss with that it, you want to be firing those thresholds off if you have a lot of adrenaline all the time then consider using things like gothic staff and dark bow to get rid of that adrenaline when you don't have thresholds left to use 
All right, so that is the main things that get covered in those uh, coaching videos that I thought would be worth mentioning once again and putting all in one big place. Now, I know I've covered it kind of quick and I've just kind of talked over it and stuff, but hopefully that is still of use for you guys and hopefully it just puts it in the back of your mind so the next time you go PVMing, you'll think about it. Main thing is going to be that inventory though. Make sure you are prepared for the boss. Make sure you understand what you're doing with it. Make sure your revolution bar set up as well. Make sure you've got all the right items that you take with you. All of this is important and all of this will make a big difference. Let me know in the comments if it does. If you have any questions, drop any comments down there too anyone else if you did enjoy the video leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new channel members thank you so much for your extra support your help is incredibly appreciated of course as always if anyone else wants to join the channel members click the join button by the subscribe button you do get some perks while you support the channel of course other than that thank you all so much for watching i appreciate it and i will see you all in the next one see you later guys bye